Well, anyway, guys, in this particular video, what I want to have a look at is why I don't solder on boats anymore. I haven't done it for many, many years on any of my boats. So, essentially, um, the, the process that we're going to go through, I'm going to strip off a bunch of wires. We're going to have a look at the soldering process, what used to happen many, many years ago. Uh, and a lot of people still do it. Um, but the problem that it creates is an issue called solder wicking and weak joints. What we're going to do is have a look at how we do the soldering and then we're going to have a look at doing a butt joint. We're going to connect them all together and then right at the very end we're going to have a look at the failure. So what I've got is I've just stripped a piece of uh, copper there. I'm using copper simply because it's just easier to see. Ten copper is silver. bit looks similar to the um, obviously the solder itself so I just want it to stand out a little bit more. So there's a piece of wire that I've prepared, right? Just twisted him together, got him all ready. And what we're gonna do is just put a bit of solder on that wire and see what happens when we solder that. Get my soldering iron ready here. Hopefully it'll start up. Yeah, there you go. First iron, she's cranked up really well. The very first thing that I'm gonna do is clean down that tip. Looking, I've got a wet rag here. That's all I ever use is a wet rag. It's all I ever used rare for us to do this these days make sure you get a bit of heat through there first all right they're starting to come up nice and clean there now now one of the things that i'll show you is the way that i i basically sold it might be a bit different to a lot of other people that put them in stands and everything else i don't use stands i just use my fingers and my hands so i've got my solder and iron in one hand i've got the solder itself between my thumb my index finger here and then basically what i'm going to do is i can move it around to wherever i want i can move the job around if i want and the solder itself so what i want to show you though is when we apply heat to the job i'm hoping this is gonna you're gonna be able to see this quite well we always tend the solder and iron and see that see where that solder goes have a look at where that solder is going just leave that on there for a little while so the point that i'm trying to show you there is whilst i dabbed the solder up near the point or the end of the wire the solder's actually made its way down oh yeah yep okay i i highly doubt you're going to be able to see this very well but on this side of the wire, the solder has managed to come all the way down to about here somewhere. What's that done? We used to have what we call multi-strand wire. The reason we use multi-strand wire is it's quite flexible. It gives us a, a, a flexible wiring system that we can bend around quite easily. We're not afraid of breaking or snapping it or anything else. But once we've soldered, and we've applied the solder up the end here, but it's continued to wick itself and move down further through the wire. It makes it stiff, it makes it brittle, it makes it basic to, to the point where um, it can become unreliable. And we'll have a look at that in a minute. So what I'm going to do now, is I've got a piece of wire here. Okay, another piece of wire here. And we're gonna twist these together. Twist them up the end there. Make this one as quick as I can. There. All right. And I'm going to solder that. So the same process again. I'm just going to use uh, put the solder in between my thumb and forefinger there. And that iron's quite hot now. Give a bit of a clean off. Something that I also do normally is always apply the heat to the underside of the job. And then when I go to apply the solder, I add the solder to the top. That's actually getting quite hot there already. Alrighty, there we go. Nice, even flow through there. The, the one a uh, mistake a lot of people make is just adding way too much solder. I like to basically stop right there. Basically just essentially enough solder uh, to lock our wires together. Uh, you can still see the strands. 
of the wires themselves, but what happens if we go way too far? All right, now, there we have it. Let that cool down a little bit. Yeah, okay. What I can see there already is whilst I was placing the, the solder itself up here, further up towards the, the end of the wire, the solder has crept down further past uh, the connection or the joint itself and it's come down into these sections of the wire. And that's why I left this open here. Took more insulation off than I needed to so that you could see exactly what's going on. I'm hoping you can see that. If I turn that around, I'm going to hold it up there as close as I can, leave it there for a couple of seconds and see if you can see how the solar has actually crept down into the wires. Now we've got a wire that's not flexible. So at this section of the wire, I can move that around, no problems at all. I've got heaps of flexibility there, it's not going to snap, I could do that all day long without any problems at all. But as soon as I get up here, it starts to become stiff. I can feel it. That even there where we can't see any any um, of the solder itself is quite stiff the problem with that is if I try and move that around a fair bit and do this I should have probably grabbed some pliers for that it started to go so even that small section there we can see again the solder that's in there it's starting to snap. That wire is actually letting go. So if we keep going, look, see, starting to just break apart. Now that's probably an over exaggeration, guys, because your boat's not going to be going to that extreme. Well, I bloody well hope not. You're going to be in some pretty rough seas if you're going to have that sort of problem. But I think, I'm hoping that that sort of shows you the problems that can be. The, the problems that can happen uh, with the solder wicking is the solder comes down further into the wire the wire becomes stiffer it becomes less flexible can't move like it used to be able to this is flexible down here but this is quite stiff up here stiff and brittle if we move it around enough it'll it's just going to snap off but if we do that with a crimp we're not going to have those problems so do it with a crimp don't do any soldering on it make sure that we get a really really good strong connection when we crimp them down and hopefully we're not going to have any problems out at sea so the sort of problems that that sort of connection can cause us when we're out at sea you can have basically total loss of power let's say if that was to snap for some reason you can have total loss of power you can get intermittent faults so intermittent faults means it'll work one minute it's not going to work the next minute and they're the hardest faults to find believe me they can be absolutely horrible because you go down to the boat you go i'm going to go and fix this thing today and you go and turn something on whatever it is it might be your anchor that's not working or your depth sander or your chart plotter you go and turn it on and go oh, it's working why is it working it wasn't working yesterday but then you walk off the boat and it stops working again and intermittent as you could be coming down off of a wave and down off of a wave bang and then suddenly your depth sander goes going on and I have to beat that out. Oh my god, what's going on there? So those sort of intermittent faults can be very, very dangerous and very, very annoying. Bilge pumps can fail, all your electronics can go down. You really don't want that. So decisions up to you whether or not you want to use solder on a boat. It's pretty easy to do. Crimping's a lot easier. I find crimping is just you know far, far better these days. No, no need to use a system that, you know probably hasn't been used since the 80s and 90s so just be very mindful of that just be very very mindful of that if you're going to use it your choice I uh, personally I won't uh, I'll never use it again in a boat uh, I just see it as uh, a point at which can lead to catastrophic events really can so that's that's that for you guys Look, I hope you got something from that. I hope you understand the process of solder wicking now, where when we heat the, the wire up, the solder travels down the wire, and that's why it makes that wire brittle. Look, even that there, you can see, I can't see any solder in that part of the wire, yet it's stiff and it's hard. It's very stiff. I can bend it there. 
but that even though you can't see any solder there it's stiff and if I even look at that started to snap just a few times around now just to prove a point that snapped off just to prove a point do that da, da, da. I can put this in time lapse and come back tomorrow and still be doing this that's probably not going to snap if I sit here long enough it will but nowhere near as quickly as that. This is quite a thick sort of a stranded uh, wire as well. It's not the strands that I normally use, uh, but you get the idea, right? Still flexible, still, I can still bend it there without any problems at all. But as soon as I apply that solder, it becomes stiff, it becomes brittle, it becomes unreliable, basically. Yeah. You get the idea? Alright. Hope you got something from that, guys. I'm trying to make these videos as, uh, you know, I don't know, practical as possible. Show you what I've learned over over many, many years uh, to avoid any problems that you might have to make sure that you don't make those mistakes and um, create problems in your boat, reliability issues that you don't need. Thanks, guys. Please remember to like and subscribe and um, we've got plenty more content coming up. I'm just going to keep these rolling in. Let's keep them coming. It's going to, not going to be all about the fiberglassing. There's going to be a lot of electrical and electronics. Um, so we're going to play around with all of those sorts of systems. See you guys.